Welcome to this course on Sobolev spaces and partial differential equations. So the book which I will be following almost faithfully is one by myself. It is called uh, Topics in Functional Analysis and Applications. It is now in the third edition and published by New Age Publishers International. They are based in Delhi. Okay, so what is this course about? So the uh, we will be studying functional analytic methods for the study of partial differential equations. This is something which has revolutionized study of PDEs and especially suitable for numerical computations with the advent of high speed computers. So many modern numerical methods depend highly on functional analyti uh, analytic uh, approach and therefore we will uh, be studying all these things in this course. So to start with we the starting point of all this is the theory of distributions and what is a distribution? So So what is a distribution? A distribution is the generalization of the notion of a function and distributions are infinitely differentiable. Functions as you know will not be infinitely differentiable even differentiable uh, continuous functions which are nowhere differentiable whereas distributions are infinitely differentiable and they generalize the notion of a function. So why do you, we want to generalize the notion of a function? This is not just for the fun of generalization, but it has some specific purpose. So when we want to solve a partial differential equation, generally by what is a classical solution, we mean a solution which is continuously differentiable at least as many times as the order of the equation and that this function satisfies the differential equation at every point in the domain of consideration. Now if you stick to this view, many interesting problems will cease to have solutions and we will not be able to study very many physically relevant things which turn up all the time in physics and engineering. Many such differential equations we cannot study. So let me give you just one simple example. So example. So consider. the problem u t plus u u x equal to 0, x in r and t bigger than 0 and u of x 0 is some given initial function u 0 of x for all x in r. So this is sometimes called Burgers equation. And in some literature, this is the limiting case of Burgers equation. There will be a small term which goes to 0. And it is a typical prototype of what are called hyperbolic conservation laws.
So this is an example of a hyperbolic conservation law. So here of course ut means du by the partial derivative. So ut for s is du by dt and ux is nothing but du by dx. So this is a notation which we use sometimes uh, for shortcut. Okay. So we will try to solve this equation by what is called the method of characteristics. What is that? So we define, so let if possible u be a sufficiently smooth solution. Okay. So now you define x of t in the following way dx t by dt is u of x t t okay. and uh, for t positive and x of 0 is some given point x naught in the real line. Okay. So, if u is sufficiently smooth, the theory of ODE says that this problem has a solution. So, let us now try to differentiate the u of x t t with respect to t. So, this will become so u t plus u x dx t by dt and that will be u t plus u u x and since u is a solution of our equation, this is going to be equal to 0. So, this means that the function u of x t is constant along the curve x t. So, if you have uh, for instance so, this is uh, let us say uh, x and this is let us say t uh, and then you have a point x t here. So, if you want you find this curve x of t. So, it will start at x of 0 okay, which is in R and therefore, you it will go like this and if you want to find the solution u of x t here all you have to do is find the line passing through this point x t and slide down the line and what is the value here. So, u of x t t will be nothing but u of x 0 0 and that is equal to u naught of x naught. Okay. So, you have solved the equation theoretically by method the, these curves are called the characteristic curves. So, all you have to do is to find the characteristic curves and given any point you find the characteristic curve passing through it and then slide down till you meet the initial x axis and then that value of the initial function will give you the solution here. So, this seems uh, perfectly happy, uh, good situation. So, you are able to solve the problem very easily. But now let us look at this. So, if this is a constant along the curve then this means that dx t by dt is u of x t t which is u naught of x naught which is a constant and therefore, you have x of t is nothing but x naught plus t times u 0 x 0. Okay, so, these are characteristic curves are straight lines. Okay, so, then this makes it even more pleasant we hope and now let us see let us for instance take x here and let us take a function u 0 which is 1 up to this point and after 1 it is the function 0 and in between it is something smooth which we can make it like this and then let us try to draw the characteristic curves. Now, if you draw the characteristic curves so if uh, you have in the negative side you have dx by dt is uh, equal to 1. So, dx by dt equal to 1 means you have all straight lines which are therefore parallel to this. 
on the positive real axis you have dx by dt is 0, remember x is here and t is here and therefore you have the characteristic curves will be perpendicular to the axis. Okay. So, now I told you that to find the solution at any point, all you have to do is to find the characteristic passing through the point and then slide down. But now let us take a point P which is here. Now you have two characteristic curves and so how do you, which down which should you slide. So therefore, in a very short time once the characteristics start intersecting, you find that the function is not well defined. In other words, the solution is not uh, uh, even continuous, it is multivalued and therefore, uh, it contradicts the fact that we started with a smooth solution. And therefore, if you stick to the notion of a characteristic uh, of a classical solution, then you will be uh, not able to study equations like this and many others. And for instance, this uh, Burgers equation or hyperbolic conservation laws, uh, a study of shock waves, which is very important in aeronautics. And therefore, one should be able to capture the discontinuities of a solution. But then for that we must first know how a discontinuous solution can be a solution of a partial differential equation. So what we do is generalize the notion of a solution uh, of a function to what are called distributions. These distributions will be infinitely differentiable and therefore we can look at solutions to differential equations in the class of distributions and thereby we will be able to study discontinuous solutions also. And these we have to interpret because uh, what do we mean by a discontinuous function being solution of a differential equation. So, we have to interpret them in a suitable way and for all this we have the theory of uh, distributions which is very useful and it was uh, for this that Laurent Schwartz got the Fields medal. Okay. So, how do we generalize the notion of a function. So, let us take the example of say L2 of R. So, this is set of all functions f which are measurable and then are equivalence classes such that integral over R mod f square dx is finite. Okay. And you know that this is a Hilbert space and therefore, any continuous linear functional. So, L2 R its dual the space of continuous linear functionals is identified with L2 of R itself. And so, any continuous linear functional is given by f going to integral g of f dx over R or any domain wherever you are working with, where g is also a function in L2 of R. This is how. So, every function in L2 of R produces a unique linear continuous linear functional and therefore, you can think of functions in L2 of R as continuous linear functionals on L2 of R. So, this is a new way of looking at the notion of a function and it is not necessary. So, to know a function in L2, it is enough to know its inner product with uh, namely all these integrals for every f in L2. So, to know g, enough to know integral f g dx over r for every f in L2 of r. In fact, it is enough to know for every f in a dense subspace of r. Okay, so, it is enough to know that once you know then the function is uniquely fixed okay, and this is not just a function, it is only defined almost everywhere as you know and therefore, uh, anyway, so it is just uh, you have to know this. So, we will adopt this approach. The way we will generalize functions is to look at them as continuous linear functionals on a suitable space. Okay, and This is the way we want to generalize the notion of a function. Okay, so, with this preamble, let me now proceed to next section which is test functions and distributions.
So let phi be a function defined say in Rn going to R and it is continuous. Then what is the support of phi? So I recall, so support of phi denoted like this is the set of all x in R or wherever domain you are working in such that phi of x is not 0 and then you have to take its closure. Okay, so this is always a closed set. So if support of phi is which is always a closed set, if it is in addition compact, we say phi is continuous with compact support. So we now use this idea. So let omega contained in Rn be an open set and then we denote by d of omega equals set of all f, f is c infinity in omega and support of f contained in omega is compact. Okay, so it, the support of f should be contained in omega, so it should be inside omega and it should be, it is a closed set and it should be a compact set. So such, this is called the space of test function. So d of omega equals space of test functions. The base field can be real or complex, so we will most of the time I will talk only of real valued functions, but all that I say will be applicable to complex values and if there is any change I will specially mention it. So we will assume without mentioning it that we are talking in uh, of real valued functions and all vector spaces which we talk about is uh, the space of uh, is uh, uh, our real valued functions. Okay, so now are there such functions which are continuous with compact support. So we want to give examples of functions which are continuous with compact support. So with that we start with a lemma. Okay. So define f from r to r by f of x equal to e power minus x square sorry e power minus x to the minus 2 if x is positive and 0 if x is less than or equal to 0 okay then f belongs to c infinity of r. So this is a infinitely differentiable function. So let us see a proof of this. So if x is less than or equal to 0, then you have f is identically 0 and therefore it is a c infinity function. If x is strictly positive, then f of x equals e power minus x power minus 2 and therefore this is also a nice c infinity function and therefore you have nothing to worry. So we have to check. continuity and differentiability at x equal to 0. So this is the only point where we have to look at the function. Okay. So now what are the derivatives? So derivatives of f for x bigger than 0 look like, uh, sorry, r finite linear combinations of terms of the form x power minus k e power minus x power minus 2. 
So if you just take this and apply the product rule and keep differentiating this, you will get repeatedly terms of this kind and uh, all the derivatives up to any order will look like this. So we will and on the left if x is less than 0, all derivatives vanish. Therefore, suffices to prove limit x going to 0, x power minus k, e power minus x power minus 2 is 0. So, this is 0 from, uh, for, from for positive x of course. Okay. So, this is what we need to prove. So, let us take consider g of t to be equal to t power k e power minus t. Then what is g dash of t? g dash of t is nothing but t power k minus 1 e power minus t into k minus 1, k minus t sir. Okay. And this will be less than or equal, less than 0 if t is greater than or equal to k. Okay. So, this function decreases after t equal to k and this means the g of t equals t power k e power minus t is less than or equal to g of k which is k of k e power min, uh, minus k. Okay. So, therefore, Now you look at x power minus k e power minus x power minus 2. So this can be written as x power k 1 by x square whole power k e power minus x power minus 2. Okay? And this now looks like g of 1 over x square. Okay? So if you have 1 by x square is bigger than or equal to k that means x is less than or equal to 1 by root k, then you have that x power minus k e power minus x square is less than or equal to x power k and then k power k e power minus k. And therefore, it follows that limit x tending to 0 of x power minus k e power minus x power minus 2, there is a minus 2 here and that is equal to 0 and this proves that all the derivatives vanish at the origin and therefore this is in fact a uh, uh, c infinity function. Now this example is also a very good example, so remark. So if you look at complex analysis, if you if you think a function is uh, differentiable in a neighborhood, then, uh, then it is infinitely differentiable automatically and it admits of a uh, power series expansion. And you know that the terms of the power series are nothing but the uh, derivative, successive derivatives of the function at that point. Now this function uh, f of x does not have a tailored expansion at x equal to 0 because all the derivatives at the origin are 0. So, if you wrote an infinite series then you will get only the 0 series but the function is not 0. Therefore, this function does not have a tailored expansion. So, in real, real valued functions infinitely differ differentiable does not imply analytic. That means it has a tailored expansion in a neighborhood. Okay? So, we have uh, infinitely differentiable functions and real analytic functions are two different classes in the real valued functions unless, unlike the complex case. Okay? So, this is an uh, uh, example to show that these two classes are in fact different. Okay? So, now we will use this example to construct C infinity functions with compact support. So, let us take rho of x 
equal to integral e power minus a square by a square minus x square if mod x is less than a and 0 if mod x is greater than equal to a. Then use previous lemma to show rho is c infinity because the only thing you have to do is a check at mod x equal to a which is x equals a and x equal to minus a and this is precisely the notion uh, the kind of function which we have been looking at and therefore uh, that you can show by uh, the same analysis that it is a c infinity function and support of rho therefore is contained in minus a a and therefore compact. So, this is a C infinity function with compact support. Okay, so now we will slightly generalize this and these are called what are called the mollifiers. Okay, so we take x equals x1 xn in Rn and of course throughout this course I will use mod x to be the Euclidean distance. So, sigma i equals 1 to n mod x i square whole power 1 half. Okay. So, now epsilon greater than equal to 0 whenever I use symbol epsilon I automatically think of it as a very small quantity very close to 0 and uh, so we define rho epsilon of x equal to kappa e power my uh, sorry epsilon power minus n e power minus epsilon square by epsilon square minus mod x square if mod x is less than epsilon and 0 if mod x is greater than equal to epsilon then easy to see in view of the previous example that rho epsilon belongs to C infinity of R. Okay, and support of rho epsilon is in fact contained in b0 epsilon closure. So, that means this is set of all x in Rn such that mod x is less than or equal to epsilon. Okay. So, this is again a C infinity function with compact support. Now, it has some other properties. You also have that rho epsilon is a non-negative function and then oh, oh I did not tell you what is kappa. Okay. Kappa is a constant Okay, so kappa you define as the following constant kappa inverse is equal to integral mod x less than or equal to 1 e power minus 1 minus 1 minus mod x square dx. So, whenever I say dx, this is the short notation in Rn. So, this is dx1, dx2, dxn. Okay, so, we are integrating with respect to all the uh, variables this is the Lebesgue measure. So, integration with respect to the Lebesgue measure in Rn. So, I will not write dx1 dx2 dxn. So, if x is x1 x2 xn, I will by dx I mean the integration with respect to all the variables in Rn that is integration with respect to the Lebesgue measure. So, now let us look at integral of Rn rho epsilon of x dx. So, this is equal to kappa by epsilon power n integral e power minus 1 minus sorry epsilon square by epsilon square minus mod x square dx. Okay. And I have to take this only on the ball mod x less than or equal to epsilon because outside that ball it is 0. Now, you take a change of variable. So, you take x replaced by x by epsilon. Okay, and then you will get this. So, then dx 
will be epsilon power n, uh, the new variable dx and therefore this epsilon power n will get cancelled. So, this will give you kappa times you have mod x less than or equal to 1 e power minus 1 minus 1 minus mod x square dx and that by definition of kappa is precisely 1. That is why we chose it in that fashion. So, this means that integral rho epsilon over Rn is equal to 1 for every epsilon positive. So, what are these functions looking like? You, you have probably seen them in some other situations. So, you have you have x here. So, you have minus epsilon and epsilon you have and then this function is 0 outside this interval in between it has it is in fact this bell shaped curve. So, this people who have studied probability will be very uh, well known and this area underneath the curve area equal to 1 ok. So, this uh, so as epsilon becomes smaller this function will become steeper and steeper and uh, because it has to end. So, if you have another smaller epsilon it will have to be something steeper like this. The area will always be equal to 1 underneath the curve and the function will have smaller and smaller supports and these are uh, will be uh, our friends for a long time. So, we will uh, repeatedly come across these things ok. So, this is uh, some so as it is we have seen some examples of uh, scene duty functions with compact support. So, now we will see that in fact this space d omega is very rich you can construct all kinds of uh, functions at will uh, which are c infinity with compact support. So, for that we need the notion of uh, the following notion. Mm -hmm.